Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to go over Tropical Storm Risk Hurricane Forecast for 2024. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So as we discussed just before, we're going to go over the April forecast from Tropical Storm Risk for the upcoming 2024 Atlantic Hurricane season. This was issued back on April 8th. So we're going to go over it today, but basically they're calling for a hyperactive season, and this is up 70% from their December forecast they did earlier, at, well, at the end of last year. So in summary, they're calling for a hyperactive season, they're, and that's mainly going to be due to the La Nina conditions that are looking to develop, the above average sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic, and that's going to be very worrisome for this upcoming season. So let's look at the numbers. Tropical Storm Risk is calling for overall 23 named storms, 11 of which could become hurricanes and 5 could become major hurricanes. And that is up significantly from the normal numbers we would see during a year, which would be around 14 tropical storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. And if you look at that ACE index, that's the accumulated cyclone energy, that's the intensity, the strength, the longevity of these storms, it's calling for 217 this year. On average, we would normally see 122. So that's very high for this upcoming season. So again, here's what they're calling for U.S. landfalls up potentially this year. And that's also higher than normal. And we're, they're calling for five overall storms to make landfall somewhere in the United States, anywhere from Maine to Texas along the East Coast and Gulf Coast. Three of those potentially could become hurricanes. Normally, we would see around 2.7 landfalls on any given year. So what's the driving factors that are causing this again? So we have a very warm Atlantic main development region. That is the area between the Caribbean islands and the coast of Africa. And we'll show you this visually in a moment. But they're also calling for the trade winds to be significantly weaker this year. In that same region and then of course we have a moderate La Nina expected to develop later on this year as we go into the summer and especially peaking sometime in the fall so here is some of the models that we're looking at this is the CFS model the climate forecast system and again this is showing the North Atlantic's in that black box there that is our MDR our main development region and those orange, yellows, and red colors are showing the above average sea surface temperatures that it's predicting for this coming season. And that black box is where they were forecasting, they're basing their forecast on. Now the other, one of the other things they were talking about was the trade winds. And they were calling for those to be weaker than normal. And what that means is with weaker than normal trade winds, you, ha you would have less of a chance of seeing wind shear develop. And what this graph is showing you here is the, the light blues is the anomalously low wind shear that's going to be in the Atlantic during the peak hurricane season months of August, September, and October. So it'll be quite strong just off the coast of Africa. That's what the reds are showing. But those light blues across much of the Atlantic and even those neutral whites are indicating that this is going to be a very low wind shear environment this year which means the intensity of these hurricanes will be able to sustain, sustain themselves better because without the wind shear cutting the tops off of those thunderstorms, that means these storms have a better chance of developing or if they're developed, becoming even stronger during intensification instead of weakening. And all this is being driven potentially from our La Nina that's going to be developing in the central and eastern portions of the Pacific Basin, which you can see here on the model as well, again for August, September, October. Right now we are still technically in an El Nino, but it is weakening, 
and this is the model prediction showing how we're going to transition throughout the rest of this spring and early summer into neutral Enzo. And as we go into the summer and into the fall, where our black arrow is located, August, September, October, we will be on the threshold of entering La Nina and then deepening as we go deeper into the fall. So we're calling for about a 60% chance based on those models of seeing La Nina develop by the time we get to the peak of hurricane season in August, September, October, which is what's driving tropical storm risk forecast. Another thing that they're looking at is analog years. What are analog years? It's what similar conditions in the Atlantic and the Pacific uh, based on what year we were looking at. And they were looking at the years of 1969, 1998, 2005, and, two, and 2010. All those years were coming off a strong El Nino that moved to a moderate to strong La Nina and very warm sea surface temperatures. And we had very destructive storms during that year. So we had Hurricane Mitch in 1998. We had Hurricane Katrina in, 20, in 2005. Um, so that's just two of the named storms I can think of off the top of my head. Just thinking about landfalling storms, which is could, could be potentially significant this year. So again, just to go over some of those numbers, they're calling for 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, five of those being major hurricanes. If you look at the bottom of this, it also shows you Colorado State University's forecast, which we'll make another video about as well and how they make their forecast. But they're calling for something very similar, 23 tropical storms, 11 hurricanes, five major hurricanes, and they're calling for an ACE index of 210, so very similar to their 217. And again, tropical storm risks calling for five tropical storms potentially make landfall with the United States this coming season. Three of those could be hurricanes. So in comparison to last year, 2023, we had an above average season, even though we did have a strong El Nino, uh, but that we had 20 named storms, but we were about average in the name in the number of hurricanes and major hurricanes, as you can see compared to the averages of 7.2, we had seven hurricanes, 3.2 major hurricanes, we had three major hurricanes. This year, of course, the numbers are much higher and deciphering weather will make their forecast in the upcoming month. Uh, as we get into the beginning of May. Tropical Storm Risk is also going to have an, another forecast coming out on May 30th, so we will try to make a forecast as that forecast comes out to see if they make any changes to what they've predicted in the month of April. I'd like to give a shout out to Devin for donating to Monday's video as I returned after a long hiatus. And give a shout out. Thank you for donating for $2 to this channel. Greatly appreciated. If you'd like to donate to the channel, you can head over to Super Thanks at the bottom of your screen where the heart button is. And you can click on it and thank us and donate to the channel any way you would like. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.